Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's Serie A review. Unlike many of the other reviews that I'm doing uh, now on Monday evening, I saw a whole lot of Serie A because there were many many intriguing games. Some were true big games, some were just interesting to me because my favorite teams were in there. So yeah, and there I say it, uh, this was a round made for Milan and of course Napoli as well who now kind of separate themselves a little bit more and as you will see tomorrow in the stats cast uh, Napoli is now favorite to win the league finally because Inter lost so yeah and Milan also climbing in there and never count out Juventus they uh, have now I think three or four wins in a row three I think and yeah I don't count out Juventus still. I think they can get, still get something going because they have a talented squad. So, oh, it, lots of things remain to, to be seen, but I, it was a very, very, very uh, interesting round with controversy and comebacks, both of which are in the first game, featured in the first game that we'll talk about, which is uh, Inter's visit to Lazio. We, uh, the for a long time went totally Inter's way however the penalty they got uh, in the 10th or 11th minute uh, come on come on I know if you give it there's little evidence to overturn it but come on that was not really a penalty so uh, that to me was already kind of yeah this is really going Inter's way again and Lazio have been a little bit on the down downturn uh, coincidentally the two teams that had the biggest changes up, uh, up here are the two teams that last week uh missed out i actually didn't put fiorentina and venezia in there because they're playing at the time that i'm recording this video and it's still nil nil because it's very very early in the game in any case the game then turned on a penalty for lazio given uh which i was a little bit more okay with but still uh also yeah i kind of a little a little bit concession but the game then totally totally exploded um uh towards the end when uh, Felipe Anderson scores the 2-1 for Lazio. But what happened before? Um, I don't know who, 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 who it was now, who was lying. I think it was... Um, name doesn't come now. Any, anyway, um, Inter player was injured, lying on the field. However, at the same time, um, Lautaro Martinez sees the player on there and advances the ball, doesn't play it out of, uh, put it out of field, which of course in Lazio says, okay, we launch an attack. And it comes uh, via Immobile to Anderson, who makes it 2-1. Inter players outrage. Why don't you play the ball out? And, and I'm thinking, A, the player is lying there for such a long time. B, you advance the ball yourself. And so why should the other team play out? Also, why should the other team play out? Why? I know there's this fair play, blah, blah. You don't need to play the ball out. Why, why, give, why give, give a counter hack when especially the team with the injured player have, was in possession of the ball and didn't bother pulling it out. So I think it was in Lazio's right to advance the ball. It was then really, really ugly. Many, many yellow cards dished out. Lautaro Martinez could not be um, calmed down, which I didn't understand because he caused the whole trouble. The Denzel Dumfries is then a little bit more upset. I can understand because he is a defender or, or whatever. It was, was crazy, but you know... I hope cooler heads prevail and then uh, Milinko Isavich keeps up his uh, series against uh, Inter and scores in stoppage time. Um, and of course, after, after the game again, the, the teams going again uh, on each other, which I find so funny because Lazio and Inter fans are very, very close. They're in many ways cl closely aligned, but uh, between the two teams, there's always some fireworks. It was an exciting game then in, in, in the for a long time. It was kind of so and so going, but yeah. Lazio get a much, much, much needed uh, win to uh, kind of save a little bit their campaign. Milan against Verona, first of all. Third jersey for Milan, really? And then Verona needed, needing to play in white. Ah, that was a weird choice because uh, last season they played both in, uh, you know, Milan, Milan played in the home jerseys and Verona played in yellow. So, um, yeah, not too happy. Gotta say, uh, those third jerseys for Milan don't look all that bad, however. This is how a proper third jersey for Milan should look like. So that's why I'm wearing it. Uh, Milan in the first half did look not quite well. You know, things did not really work out. And I thought that the goal by Cabrari, although it was a little bit of a mistake in the build-up, 
uh, you know, better defending will save this. Uh, actually was a deserved, but it was not a two goal lead that was deserved because that penalty was another one. Why was this given? It is not um, Kalinic who is being fouled, it's Romagnoli who has the ball and Kalinic steps in and actually he steps on Romagnoli, at least that's the feeling that I had. There was nothing there and I thought when I look at the replay, the two, uh, it wasn't, it didn't show too many and I, I, I would have liked maybe to see a different angle. But from what I, I, I could tell to me, this was never, absolutely never a foul. It stands. I guess there was too little to overturn it. Again, re referees are a big note in this um, in this video. And so Barak steps up in a 25th fourth minute, Verona leads 2-0. Which coincidentally is very similar to what happened last season when also Verona had a 2-0 lead in Milan. I think Milan pulled one back before the half, but I might be wrong there. Um, and yeah, uh, Milan not many chances and if it was, it was kind of the so, so and so. And then probably the best player for Milan up until by the Re who, who was working hard had to come off, Leao came, came on. And then another change that I did not expect actually to Daniel Maldini and Salemekas came off and Castiejo and Krunic come on. Castiejo and Krunic, two uh, bit part players that actually Milan would not have been... Um, too unhappy if they would have been solved, uh, sold, not solved, uh, but it honestly turned the game in Milan's favor. Um, it took a while, the worf, you know, I think there was one chance around the 55th or, or so, but it was in the end, uh, Leo uh, crossed the Giroud heads in, game on. And at that point then the pressure got ratcheted up and Verona had hardly any uh, space to breathe. This was really the Milan that I was expecting uh, with uh, Kessie and Benacer and Krunic kind of really putting a lot of pressure on them. Um, and then Milan, of course, trying to gain many, many penalties. Uh, I have to say some were a little bit too obvious. However, Castiejo then fell in the box, which I think was a non, we don't need to discuss that one. And Kessie with all the contract talks and seemingly the way he was celebrating after converting the penalty where he makes it 2-2. Uh, you could see that he kind of said to the Kura, you know, I'm still here, um, I can do it. The players quickly turned him around, but uh, it's got to be said that, yeah, um, at the moment, as great as Cassia is, he seems to be on, uh, on his way out and maybe Milan wants to make some money because his salary demands are really hard to be met. 2-2. Game on. Ibra comes on and he seemingly confused uh, Kara Günther so much that Casiejo's cross, he wants to clear very artistically and it misses the ball, goes on that, like in, in, into the goal. 3 to Milan. <laughs> Yay! We turned it around. First time to turn around two goal deficit since that famous win over Juve also at home, where I think they were at <laughs> the first 15 minutes of the second half, they were 2 0 down, and then uh, in the last half they scored four, which is still one of my favorite Milan wins of all time. Milan could have made it 4 2 with uh, Ibra, of course, also trying a bicycle kick, but on the other hand, there was a, a good chance for uh, Hellas. I have to say this was a character win for Milan because many, many injured uh, players or, or uh, Kobe players and Mike Magnon being out. I Yeah, that's one that has me slightly worried to be honest, but you know, a win nonetheless and a very important one at that. Um, of the early results on Sunday, Atalanta's 4 win at Empoli looks impressive, of course. Cagliari beating Sampdoria, also quite a kind of big win. Then Napoli against Torino. Ah, Torino really dug in there. Napoli with the world's first Halloween jerseys, which they were, will wear in two matches. Um, they don't look not. Get blue numbers on there and you have some. So I know why you put red because of Halloween. Fits with the latest sponsor, but on, on, honestly, I didn't like the... The look is not very Napoli. Let's put it that way. Um, they get a penalty, which also I thought was kind of a soft penalty. Insigne, uh, effort is saved by Milinkovic Savic. Um, then a goal from Di Lorenzo. Was, I think I could see it on the first replay, or I thought it's offside. Was then rural at the end, very, very late. Um, Ozyman in the 81st minute continues his great form. And Napoli, is their great run. They are still have not dropped any points in the league. Get a 1-0 win. And then all eyes were on Juve Roma. Um, 
Juve got a very early lead where if Moise Kane would have been just two millimeters wider, the, the goal would not have counted. It was such a weird goal where uh, the cross comes in, Bentancur had it and uh, within a few centimeters onto Kane who gets it in, into the net. Roma actually, I think, was relatively well in the game. Then a big blow, Saniolo had to, ha had to go off, but Roma gets uh, some effort first going and they get a penalty. Uh, the referee, for some reason, uh, didn't want to give the advantage, uh, or Sato, didn't want to give the advantage to um, Tammy Abraham, who scores the equalizer. Why do you give the penalty when there is already the equalizer scored? You, there is no need to give the, this penalty and then it's saved by Chesney and yeah uh, you hang on to the win but this was a galling decision I have I have to say and if I was a Roma fan I am second my second favorite team I mean more Milan than Roma but yeah uh, this I could, could, could understand and I'm really really mad at that uh, I think I was Maybe not as mad because I actually watched more NFL and had the game uh, on the side screen and then went to bed early, kind of and watched the highlights. But I still, I do not get this decision. So yeah, that was the action from Serie A this weekend. We have actually a pretty big weekend uh, coming up with again two big games, all on Sunday. We have first Roma against Napoli, Derby della Sole, and then Derby d'Italia Inter Juve. Inter having a pretty tough schedule coming up with only a relief coming after this round and then you know there's a milan derby at the end of the slot as well so i mean there's a whole lot of stuff going on uh but also milan also it's not the easiest of schedules as well although i think the next two games should be winnable but you never know verona should have been an easy easy win and it was not and with all these injuries Yep, yep, yep. But at least a little bit of a cushion and let's see where it goes going forward. In any case, let me know what you thought about this round in Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.